Welcome to Computer Tech TV. My name is Rick Arter, and today's video will be a short tutorial on how to use Prime 95. Well, first, what you need to do is you need to follow the link that I posted in the description box below, and you need to download, uh, depending on what operating system you're using, you need to download the Prime 95 for 32 bit Windows or for 64 bit Windows. I'm using 64 bit Windows, so as you can see here, I've downloaded Prime 95 64 bit. Now, there's going to be another program that you want to get uh, while you're running this, and that's going to be either real temp or core temp or any te uh, any temperature program that you can monitor your temperatures while you're running this, so that if it fails, you can tell if it's voltage or if it's just temperatures are going way too high. And if it doesn't fail and you're still running the test, you want to ensure that you have adequate cooling, so you basically before you run this you want to check out what the max temperature for your CPU is going to be so basically check that out and uh, if you have an Intel you can go to the Intel site if you have an AMD you can go to the AMD site or just Google your CPU and you know Google max temperature for whatever processor you have and that will basically tell you what the max temperature you have uh, for your CPU and when you're overclocking or just in general you want to have the lowest possible temperature so I would um, suggest that you run any fans you have on your CPU coolers at 100%. This can always help. So basically, once you get your uh, temperature program, you know you want to open it up, and I've got mine running here at the bottom, but I already know that my CPU is good, so I'm not going to worry about that in this video. So what you want to do is you want to download whichever um, version that you need. You want to double-click on the zip file here, and then you'll have... Uh, and you'll have a uh, program here, it's an EXE. I'm going to double click on it and it will extract. And basically, it'll open it up here. Uh, and right now, we're just going to stress test it. Now, you have three different versions you can run here. You have a small FFT, which is what you want to run when you're trying to stress your CPU to the max because this is going to fit all the stuff on the cache of the CPU. This isn't going to test your memory at all. Uh, it's not going to do anything but really test your CPU. Now it's going to stress your motherboard as well. So if there is something wrong with your clocks on your CPU or your motherboard or your voltages are not right, this will tell you right quick. They also have in place large FFTs. This is actually going to heat your CPU up a little bit more and uh, use more um, you know power consumption basically as it says right here and it will test some of your RAM because the large FFTs will not fit onto the cache of your CPU and then they also have a blend test here now this you can use to test all of your memory however I suggest if you're overclocking your memory you run a, a test called prime or a, a test called mem test first um, and I'll do a, another video on that coming up soon if anybody's interested so basically let's uh first start off here I'm going to do your uh, small FFTs actually before I start this um, let's go up here you want to go to advanced first and you want to check your round off checking you need to make sure that that's checked and then let's go to test torture test and here small FFTs and then down here it'll say number of torture test threads to run. This is the amount of cores um, that you have. Now if you're running a CPU that's got hyper threading like the new Intel CPUs, um, you want to account for that as well. And almost 100% of the time it's going to have the default and the amount of threads that you're going to need to run here. But if for some reason it doesn't, just go ahead and set it to the right one. And you're going to know if it's not right because when it starts running uh, and you go down here and you open up your task manager, um, if you're not running the full amount, your CPU usage won't be maxed. And usually, your um, the test, uh, your you know real temp or core temp, your temperature test will have a percentage on there of your CPU usage. So if you're running this test and you're not running 100%, then you need to readjust this torture threads here, or uh, the threads that it's going to run. So basically, after you do that, you just want to hit OK, and then it will start running the test, and it'll. Uh, run each of these tests for a certain amount of time and then once it gets done running that it'll go to the next one and so on so uh, you can actually set this to run let's go ahead and stop this uh, you can actually set this no nope, wrong one 
to run uh, if you want to do custom you can set a run a certain FFT size and then you can specify how much memory to use because sometimes if you don't have a whole lot of memory like I'm only running two gigabytes of memory in this system if you go to blend and you just let it run the, by the default standard sometimes it's not gonna run the proper way because it's using so much memory that it actually will start using your hard drive um, your uh, cache on your hard drive so to get by that you basically want to take the amount of RAM that you have and then you can go down on your start menu and you can check um, how much memory you're actually using I'm using a little bit more because I have cam studio running and you can actually um, get a good idea by you know leaving this open and then see for example I guess I could do this here see say we'll run uh, 1024 and not okay. Running it again, and you can see here that it's almost right at our two gigabytes. So, and if you'll see, if you're running too much RAM, this actually won't max out. So, you basically want to check to make sure you're running your full amount of memory. But like I said, if you're running it, uh, if you're overclocking your memory, whether it's the clocks, voltages, or your timings, you definitely want to run MemTest 86 outside of Windows on a disk first and if it passes you know 10 to 20 passes of that then you're good to go now a lot of people ask me how long should I run a stress test well I know some people think that running it for an hour or two hours or even four hours is plenty but I've seen CPUs and almost any kind of overclock on a computer fail at eight or nine hours so running it for four hours and then thinking that you're okay is not a good idea because if your overclock is unstable not only can it be bad for your hardware but it can corrupt your OS and it can just give you all kinds of problems down the line I've seen a lot of people who claim that their overclock is stable and then they wonder why their games are crashing or why their computer shuts off after a certain amount of time. Well, that's because you are either overheating or something is not set right. So that about wraps it up, guys, for this. If you have any questions, if there's anything I forgot to cover, please be sure to let me know in the comments or send me a personal message, and I will help you out. And uh, more videos to come, guys. You have a great day.